The 2024 season seems to be closer than we think, but now that we're stuck in the summer break, it seems like we're going to deal with something much more interesting, the driver's lineup for the upcoming season. With big names like Hamilton, Leclerc and Sainz being rumoured to sign new contracts elsewhere, as well as the likes of Piastri and Norris being linked to Red Bull and Ferrari respectively, this could be one of the biggest shake-ups that the F1 world has seen. But let's start with one of the most obvious disappointments in the sport, such as Kevin Magnussen. The Haas driver hasn't been able to produce nearly as good of a performance as you would have expected from him in the season so far. And the fact that he's been outperformed by a driver who hasn't been on the grid as a full-time driver for three straight years goes to show everything about where the Dane currently sits with Haas. He's been one of the main reasons why Mick Schumacher got sacked from the team. And while he hasn't been able to prove his favourite role right now, he's been steadily improving in the past couple of races. Nonetheless, this might not be enough for Haas to consider him as a proper solution for that second seat in Haas, and considering how close they are with Ferrari, it seems like his replacement could be found in Giovinazzi or Schwarzman. Haas is a team that is known for breeding talent for Ferrari's academy drivers, and even though they've tried their best to become independent and be their own separate team, that hasn't proved to be such a successful move as of now. Even Gunter Steiner has spoken about this situation and gave Magnussen an ultimatum from five races to improve his pace before they open up the contractual talks as they end along with the season in Abu Dhabi. Whether he'll get replaced or not, time will tell. But if we're to judge by the history, it seems like Haas are not going to be overly patient with the comeback Viking and will replace him in the first instance. But apart from Magnussen, there are some other attractive names that are yet to sign a contract with their respective teams, such as Lewis Hamilton. While every sign points towards Mercedes and Hamilton continuing their collaboration, it doesn't like it's going to be a smooth ride, and the Brit might be looking at exploring his options elsewhere. Toto Wolff has explained the entire situation as a very picky one and compared it to his marriage with Susie. Even though they have arguments, they're not divorcing each other over it. But this time, a divorce might be the only solution for Hamilton and Mercedes if the problems continue to persist. It was initially believed that the number one issue was the ambassadorial role that Hamilton would have wanted from Mercedes two years from now, which would be the time of his retirement, and that's been denied by Wolf. Now, with Mercedes failing to build a car that would be more and more competitive with every weekend passing by, and with Hamilton and Wolff having contradictory statements about whether or not they should push with the upgrades in 2023, or put a definite halt on it and focus on 2024, there are some turbulent times ahead for these two bulls. More likely than not, Hamilton will remain with Mercedes, but the circumstances under which he'll sign the contract are pointing towards insecurities, which could further deepen his trust in the team's ability to be back in the championship fight sooner rather than later, prompting a move away from Brackley. Another hot driver who had a lot of rumours flying around him, and they were initially squashed by him reportedly signing a new contract, is Leclerc. And even though he's yet to put pen to paper to any contract sheet offered to him by Ferrari, he has inevitably started a war with his teammate Carlos Sainz. We all know how their chemistry has gone a bit south in the past season due to the troublesome car that they had to drive, the SF23, and with how Sainz has been able to keep up the pace with Leclerc, even though he's yet to stand on the podium. The new lucrative contract offered to Leclerc has shown one thing to the smooth operator. He needs to be finding a place elsewhere. This is why he's reportedly signed a prenup contract with Audi. All signs point towards signs actually suiting up for the German manufacturer and trying to win a championship with them much earlier than signs with Ferrari. With how the situation currently stands with the actual technical regulations, there's a huge doubt that any team not named Red Bull would be able to win any kind of championship or even be competitive. But that doesn't mean the gap could not be closed further, or when 2026 regulations arrive, another team couldn't snatch the championship straight from the bat. The hopes in Audi are high, and the connections from Sainz's father are also present, as he drives in Rally Dakar for Audi, and in 2025, there is a huge possibility that we'll see the smooth operator drive for Sauber just to get a feel of the car before the real deal. Obviously, Zhao's contract is still up for renewal, and the initial reports are that the Chinese driver will remain with Alfa Romeo one more year, but due to the magnitude that Sainz is bringing with himself, there could be a massive overhaul in Sauber, more precise Audi, and even a mid-season shift in 2024 cannot be thrown out of the window as a possibility. 
That would leave one empty space in Ferrari that would need to be filled. And the two superstars in McLaren, who were able to build name for themselves in the last four races, are up for grabs. Even though Norris is contractually obligated with McLaren until 2025, a potential buyout could be done if Sainz decides to move on and leave a dent in Ferrari. But on the other hand, Ferrari could also choose Piastri to replace the Spaniard if they feel like Norris is not approachable or is way too committed to McLaren. Both McLaren drivers believe that they're on the right path, and they're not that heavily related to other teams either, with Red Bull trying to pull the plug on Perez and replace him with Piastri to form a super team from 2025 onwards. But with how the Mexican has been improving in the last couple of races, I guess this move would not make that much sense. Yet Marco has openly spoken about the opportunity of signing a young driver next to Max, and given the fact that this is exactly what the new leadership of Red Bull by Oliver Mintzlaff wants, I don't feel like Perez will live to see yet another extension of his contract. While this is all meant to happen in 2025, mid-season shifts are not something that we should be throwing away, and with the comeback of Daniel Ricciardo, the entire situation has been spiced up to a further extent. The Honey Badger has everything to lose, but everything to gain is well for 2024, because if he continues to perform the way he does right now, and consistently, then I doubt that he'll be considered a proper driver for Alpha Tauri in 2024, let alone Red Bull. Keep in mind that the sole mission he was brought into the Italian squad was to raise the competitiveness in the team, bring a lot of experience, and bring back the team in the midfield. But as of now, all of this seems to be mission much harder than originally anticipated by the Aussie, as he's been given a harsh wake-up call by Sonoda in Spa. Ricardo's seat in 2024 is one that's also under heavy review, mostly because he's shown a lot of promise in the first race in Budapest, but dropped heavily in the second one in Spa, the one in which Sonoda scored points to extend the humiliation even further. Apart from him, Logan Sargent also needs to be afraid for his seat, because even though he is a member of the Williams Academy and has a lot of value for the American market, he's been consistently outperformed by Albon, who's slowly but surely pushing Williams to go into the midfield, the right way for the team. Sargent has been picking up the pace slowly, but just like Nick De Vries, we cannot be ever too sure about what's going to happen with the drivers who are having a hard time performing, mostly because F1 is a merciless sport that doesn't care about your background as long as you're not bringing results to the table. Federique Vesti, the Mercedes Academy driver, could be smiling at home watching how everything is unfolding with Sargent, as he could be the best candidate to grab that spot, mostly because he's having an amazing season in F2 as well. Everything is in the air right now, and while you might be confused about all of the names that have appeared in the last couple of weeks, we assure you that once everything settles down, this might be one of the greatest silly seasons in the history of the sport.